Hello everyone. In this video, let's discuss more Coulomb failure criteria. More specifically, let's talk about what this criteria is all about, what it tells us, and why it is important. Starting out with the criteria itself, what it tells us is when any material fails. And for the purposes of this course, uh, for this video, let's um, talk about soils and rocks specifically. So. If you look at the pictures on the right over here, you'll see picture down below shows a slope which is intact and which hasn't failed. And picture up above shows a failed slope. Um, what this criteria helps us tell is what is at play, what is happening, what are the forces, and what are the stresses within the soil itself, which causes a slope such as this to go from here to a failure such as this. And the basic idea is behind this criteria is that there's a certain combination or critical combination of normal and shear stress that occurs within the soil, which causes it to fail because once those stresses exceed um, beyond what the soil is able to withstand, uh, a failure such as this can occur. So let's talk about that a little bit more, like exactly what does, what do these stresses mean and um, like what do they look like? So if I look at a um, failure slope such as this, and if say if I were to cut a section through it, um, cut a slice through it, just so I can view it in 2D, in 2D, this slope or say this hill would have looked something like this. Um, and then a failure occurred along a plane called the failure plane, which caused this mass of soil to kind of break away or rupture from the rest of the slope. Um, and just simply separate from it. Now, exactly like what would these normal and shear stresses look like though? Um, well, to understand these stresses, instead of looking at it from a global perspective, let's look at from a more smaller, let's say a single element of soil from an element of soil perspective, if I was to draw it out, it would look something like this. I'm going to draw an element and I'm going to draw the stresses that would act on this element. The normal stresses um, are essentially pressure. It's pressure that is exerted perpendicular um, to the plane. So if I was to draw that out, it would look something like this. which is perpendicular to each of the four faces of our element here. And shear stresses are essentially, it is essentially pressure exerted, which is parallel to our faces here. So if I was to draw that out, it would look more like this. And normal stresses, we typically denote them by the letter, by the symbol sigma. Let's call this sigma x in x direction. Let's call this sigma y in y direction. And then shear stresses are all four of these tend to be the same. And let's call it tau. Now, given certain stresses that occur within this element, a failure can occur along plane. And it could be any plane. And you can cut infinite amount of planes through this. Um, but let's say uh, for a discussion, our failure plane looks like this. Um, now, what we want to know and what we're interested in is what is the orientation of this failure plane and what are the forces that are exerted on this plane that is, again, our normal stresses and our shear stresses what are these stresses that are exerted on it which causes this failure to occur? Um, 
So to do that, what we can do is um, we can go back to our criteria. Now, Moore Coulomb said that these two things, which is normal and shear stresses, they're related to each other. And what does that relation look like? Well, if I have to plot it where, say, my x-axis is sigma and my y-axis is tau, and if I was, if I was to plot the relationship um, between them, you'd see that it looks like a straight line, something like this. Um, now, this straight line that we have, this is the criteria. How is this the criteria? Well, if you happen to have a combination of stresses, a combination of normal and shear stresses, which is below this criteria, let's say over here, you will not have a failure. However, if you hit this criteria, failure will occur. And if say you're, can you be above this? Well, not really. You can't be above this criteria simply because a failure would occur before you even reach a combination of stresses, which is above it. So that is just not feasible. So again, like talking about like, how do we come up with the stresses and with the orientation is like we can go back to a, a more circle um if you're not familiar with more circle um you can watch our video on more circle um if it's not uh, uploaded yet it's forthcoming um and we're gonna explain that um in depth to you guys but but we need to utilize a more circle over here to kind of find the stresses um, that occur, the stresses that occur which cause the failure and like what the orientation is. So what I can do is since I already have sigma as my x-axis and tau as my y-axis, I can simply just try to draw as best I can my more circle in this plot and uh, let's say this is the center of the circle let's say this is the radius yep and before we get to the circle um we need this criteria in a form which is in the form of an equation so this criteria in the form of an equation is well quite simply tau we know tau at failure is a function of sigma. And for a straight line, that is quite simply, in this case, sigma tan phi plus c. This is just an equation for a straight line where my angle, and I'm going to try to draw this a little better let's 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 say this is the extension um, for a straight line here and let's say this is the extension um, for our um, x-axis here and you see this angle over here this angle is our angle phi also known as friction angle and you see this dimension here this dimension is c also called cohesion and that's how we get this equation for our um, more long theta criteria now um what we want to go, what what we want to do is like go back to our more circle here, and we can see these are our principal stresses. Say sigma one, 
let's say sigma three, and um, and let's say failure occurs at angle well two theta, two theta. Um, and now just based on this figure, we can already kind of see the relationship between phi and theta, where well we know this one hundred eighty degree minus two theta. And we know sum of angles is 180 degree where for this tangent it is 90 degrees um, we know that our angle is going to finally come out to be theta equals 45 plus phi over 2. this is simply just trigonometry if you add up these angles like add up 180 degree minus two theta 90 degree if you add this up and equate it to 180 degree this is what you'll come up with so we already have established uh, a relationship between our friction angle and our theta angle um, in the Mohr circle theta being the orientation. Um, now, just based on this figure itself, um, you can also come up with a relationship between our principal stresses, which is, by the way, if I was to draw this out as an element, if I'm talking about principal stresses now, I'm going to ignore my tau because now it's purely normal stresses because at my principal stresses, it's tau is zero. It would be um, something like this, I believe, sigma one, it's called the sigma three. So this is what the elements stresses would look like. Um, and um, Considering this figure, um, along with these um, these stresses, um, we can come up with a relationship between um, our theta and principal stresses, or in other words, our phi and principal stresses, since we have already established this relationship between theta and phi. Um, I have already derived this. Um, I'll put the derivation in the description. So um, if you're interested in seeing um, what that relationship looks like, um, you can um, look at the derivation there. Um, but without getting into the nitty gritty details of how to derive this, um, this is what this relationship would look like where Um, sigma one um, principal stress equals sigma three tan squared theta plus two c tan theta, um, and we already know that theta is forty five plus phi over two, so we can just replace that, and this is our relationship between principal stresses and um, our friction angle. Now, um, typically, like what? Um, what people are interested in is uh, they want to find out, um, like, given this relationship and given theta equals 45 plus phi over 2, like, we can use more circle to come up with the orientation. Like, we can know what theta is at the end of the day and know what the failure plane is. But how do we then find out what our stresses are? Um, well, that again is quite easy. Um, if you go to um, more circle, um, and if you look at um, just more circle formulas for um, just um, changing the uh, for for at any angle theta, um, what the stresses are, what the sigma is, what the tau is, um, and Essentially, instead of using sigma x, sigma y, you can use sigma 1 and sigma 3 rather than sigma x and sigma y. And we'll cover the formula um, and how to derive this um, in detail. But um, 
essentially you can substitute sigma x and sigma y um, as sigma one and sigma three and your tau x y in that formula for like stresses at an angle theta in a more so called like essentially stress transformation formula if you use tau x y equals zero that way you can come up with what sigma and tau it takes for the failure to occur and this is the relationship um, that you get and then if you have your uh, principal stresses and your theta angle you're able to determine what stresses cause a failure and that's it for today um thank you for watching bye